Now, for some time, I've been uh, wanting to make myself a uh, high rows connector to uh, SMA connectors. So these are all little uh, high rows connectors. They're known by about uh, five or six different names. Another common name for these is the UMCC, the Ultra Micro Coaxial Connector. You tend to find these uh, inside uh, laptops, inside uh, routers. This is a uh, laptop card here with uh, the two connectors here. And also, I've got a router board here. It's got uh, one little high rows connected there for an external antenna. But uh, for a while now, I've been wanting to make one because I've got little antennas like this. This is a 2.4 gigahertz antenna. And I would really love to uh, test this antenna design. And again, I've got some even smaller ones here. These are for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And I would also love to test these. But uh, I'm also seeing the uh, high rows connector being used at uh, 5.8 gigahertz for uh, FPV. Now, if I uh, bring this little transmitter here, that uh, somebody's asked me if I could uh, convert this to uh, SMA connector, and I'm currently looking at it to uh, decide the easiest way that I could do that. I'm not quite sure if I can yet, because there's not a lot of board there to connect the SMA to, but basically this has got a high rows connector and this is the little uh, dipole antenna here. I'm not sure if it's a uh, dipole or a monopole, but uh, this clicks into there. And of course, it's extremely lightweight, so uh, it's not going to uh, eat into your flying time much. But with uh, the high rose connector here, unfortunately, I can't test this antenna for starters. And also with the high rose, you only get on average 50 insertions, so you can only connect an antenna around 50 times to this so if you want to use different antennas the life expectancy of this isn't very much at all and uh, 50 insertions is just typical for uh, high rose connectors depending on uh, which manufacturer doesn't tend to make uh, much of a difference you may get more out of one or you may get less but uh, 50 uh, insertions into one of this is uh, standard typical across the industry that you can get away with uh, inserting one of these high rows connectors to the uh, coaxial line now as i said there's lots of uh, different antennas this is a another one here this has come from a laptop and this is a uh, inverted f type antenna and again you know i would really love to test this it comes with the high rows connector of course so let me show you what i've come up with to uh, get over the uh, problem of uh, high rows connector to SMA. So this is the uh, first one that I made then. I've got the uh, SMA connector here on this end and uh, I've got it all housed in this piece of copper tubing and I've got the high rows connector here at the end and uh, this one works really, really well. You can see I've got some epoxy putty around there at the bottom as well because I'm going to be inserting on here so this is going to take a little bit of pressure so I've got the epoxy putty there just to uh, give it a bit of uh, rigidity so we don't end up snapping the uh, PCB but this is the uh, first one that I made and this is made simply by uh, cutting one of these out of a uh, old router or an old Wi-Fi card and uh, just using the track on the uh, PCB board to solder some coax onto there and then underneath here we've got the ground plane so you can see how I've modified this semi rigid coax here to fit the uh, you know the modification and uh, it's as simple as that and uh, also this one uh, I'm going to pop a piece of uh, you, you know copper tubing over there just to give it a little bit more strength and build up the base again with uh, some epoxy putty so it's really really simple to do now this one is the uh, second one that I uh, came up with again we've got a uh, SMA connector on the end of this and uh, I've cut out uh, the track and the uh, high rose connector from an old PCB board I've just done exactly the same thing and then uh, I've cut off the two little legs that I come on this uh, uh, SMA connector but I've soldered it onto the bottom there, onto the ground plane. So this one is quite strong. Again, you'd have to remember to support the bottom of this when you click your high rose connector in place. But this one also works really well. So as I say, you can get your high rose connectors from uh, an old Wi-Fi card, 
like uh, this one here and here we've got two very nice tracks here that we can uh, cut out cut down there through the PCB and I've got some really nice long tracks there to make uh, two adapters from this card so it's basically just going through what you've got in your junk bin some old uh, routers or old Wi-Fi cards and then cut out the uh, you know the lengths here with the high rose connector and uh, the uh, signal path there on the PCB and then you can use that in conjunction with either some semi-rigid coax like you've just seen or using one of these uh, little SMA connectors here and you can choose if you want RPSMA or just SMA so I want to make up two more of these adapters I want one that's RPSMA and a uh, second one that's uh, SMA so I'm going to be using this Wi-Fi card here because as I said I've got some nice long tracks to play with here and I'm just going to cut these out with the Dremel tool So this is the uh, two pieces of PCB here that I've uh, shaped and cleaned up and uh, they've got the high rose connectors there and I've also on uh, the trace here to the centre pin of the high rose connector cleaned off some of that uh, solder mask there just so we can tin up with solder and same on the back I've uh, cleaned away the solder mask here on the ground plane so we can uh, tin up on there and solder the SMA connector to the back and what's nice about these because it is an RF component you have got small vias going all the way through the top of the ground plane here all the way to the uh, back of the ground plane I mean you can always test that with a uh, continuity on your multimeter but uh, on an RF component like this you will always have those vias and uh, here I've got the uh, two SMA connectors one that's uh, RP SMA and one that's uh, SMA there and you can see on this one I've uh, bent the pin slightly here so I can sandwich it in between here uh, this hasn't been bent yet so you can see the uh, difference between the two there but I want to sandwich it in between here I'm going to tin up first on the PCB and tin up on the pins on these here and then uh, we should be able to solder it all together so I'm ready to solder this in place and because I've tinned everything up already just need a little bit of uh, solder on the end of my soldering iron I've got it in the vise here just to uh, help me hold it in position and just apply a little bit of heat just to get it all to flow and the same with the pin on the opposite side because I've already pre-tinned the pin I've also pre-tinned the uh, trace that we scraped away the solder mask a little bit of heat in there it's already making contact just get that solder to flow and the job's done so here we are with the uh, little uh, adapter in action I'm testing a uh, 5 gigahertz uh, little uh, PCB antenna that came from I think it's from um, the second Virgin uh, Media router I'm not quite sure but uh, it's a little 5 gigahertz uh, antenna and if we take a look at the network analyzer so here it is on the uh, network analyzer then you can see that you've got a really nice frequency response here a really nice dip from that uh, little PCB antenna there and uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi works from uh, 5 gigahertz up to uh, 5.1 gigahertz typically typically for most routers you can get some high-end routers that work a little bit beyond that but uh, 5 gigahertz to 5.1 so it's centered here at 5.1 gigahertz and I can move the cursor around so we can look there's uh, 5 gigahertz there and uh, I haven't had the network analyzer on for a great length of time it'll probably get a little bit more accurate if I let it warm up but we can see just from my little adapter that I've put together in uh, you know it didn't take uh, any longer than uh, 30 minutes I'm now able to test little PCB antennas like this so you know something that wasn't available to buy commercially I've uh, knocked up in 30 minutes out of uh, some scrap PCBs lying around and I've got something now that I can use on the bench so I hope you found this uh, video interesting and I just can't find 
anybody selling these on the internet anywhere. I mean, quite possibly, if you work for a big company, you just put this out to tender and have some made, but uh, that would cost you an arm and a leg. And there's also the wait time as well. You know, you can be waiting up to a month to get them back, um, after, you know, after you've ordered them. But uh, especially if you're a student at university and uh, you come across wanting something like this, then just go home, go through your parts bins, and I'm pretty sure you could uh, knock something up quite easily like this. And, uh, you know, these two here only took me 30 minutes to make. And also it gave a good insight into how well some of these antennas work. I mean, this is the uh, 5 gigahertz uh, antenna that I took from, uh, I think it's a Virgin Media second generation Super uh, Hub 2, I think it is. But uh, it worked really well. I mean, it's quite responsive at 5 gigahertz. But now I'm going to be able to test all these antennas. And again, in a future video, I'm going to be testing the uh, power output of this little uh, mini uh, transmitter here at 5.8 gigahertz and we can also test this uh, monopole antenna as well although it might be a hertzian dipole I don't know until I take all the heat shrink off there but I thought what we could do with this is measure it uh, weigh it sorry with this little uh, antenna here and then what we can do is see if we can modify it to SMA because that's what somebody's asked me to do to it and then we can make uh, this, this same antenna out of SMA as well and then we can weigh the uh, difference because it's all right this being you know really really light you are limited to the antennas that you can use in it then and uh, also as I say you know 50 insertions is about all you get out of these so it's going to be uh, damaged eventually and then the whole thing's going to be useless so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and uh, hopefully you found it interesting and you'll join me on the next one